So continuing on that vein, my name is Kyle McDonald. I'm also an artist. I also work on Open Frameworks. I'm the community manager, so I try and figure out how to get all these people who are trying to contribute to this code base uh, to do something productive instead of working against each other. Um, I have a bunch of notes I left up here if you guys are interested. Firepad.net slash imagination camp. And I'm just going to go through a ton of stuff uh, really quickly, and I might not get through all of it. So the rest is there. Um, if you're, I, I kind of was thinking in two sections, both like working with each other and with code, and then like working with bodies and interfaces. Because working with each other is like, you know, we have to interface to each other somehow. I've been interfacing with my computer using processing for a long time to write code. Um, the Khan Academy now is using processing to like teach people how to write code, which is awesome. They have a bunch of really good examples up there um, showing like you know how you can use uh, processing in your browser. Uh, it's like I don't know, it's one of the best interfaces I've seen yet. Sketchpad.cc. People are doing processing with each other in real time. Like you open up two browsers and you both have access to the same sketch and you can write code together. I think this is a really powerful interface. It's not you know. This, we're not talking about like tracking people, we're talking about like interfacing people to each other and what tools are make make that possible. Sketchpad is built on another tool uh, called Firepad, or sorry, Etherpad, um, which was, uh, I forget who wrote it originally, but Google eventually bought it because it was kind of in competition with Google Wave. Uh, before they kind of shut it down, they open sourced it. So there were a ton of um, like Etherpad variants that are kind of floating around. One of them being Sketchpad, where people are writing code together. Another one being Firepad, where I'm showing these, uh, uh, where I'm sharing these notes. Um, I've also been a fan of like the idea of uh, anonymous uh, or collective identities recently. Um, I'm teaching a class all about glitch right now here at ITP, and um, oh man. This page is like not happy. That's how glitchy it is. <laughs> um, I'm teaching a class all about glitch right now at ITP, and uh, I set up the class so that uh, there was. I created an email account for the class, and I created a Tumblr for the class. And then on the first day of class, I gave the username and password to everyone. And I said the only rule is you can't delete other people's posts or delete accounts. Um, and so far, it's been going okay. People have been like doing crazy stuff to the website, but it's it's lasted so far. Um, GitHub, another innovative tool for interfacing with other people and interfacing with code. Um, uh, some people are like trying to make um, better ways of understanding what's going on behind the scenes with Git and GitHub, uh, and some of them are like based on visualizing, you know, the structures that are going on behind the scenes with Git. Um, this is a good example of that, but the page isn't scrolling anymore. Um, so back to what Zach was just saying a second ago, the Connect has been uh, like a really good example of people working together uh, on a tool that was made commercially for people to you know, consume um, as part of their entertainment system. Um, people took this and appropriated it and started sharing code with each other and deciding that they had their own ideas for like what this interface could mean to them. Um, and you know, a, a year after the Connect was released, Microsoft put out this video called Connect Effect, which is really entertaining, um, where they kind of, uh, said, you know, speak back to us. So the video's not working, sorry. Um, they speak back to us about, like, what, you know, how they see us working with it, and they show a bunch of examples of people doing, like, you know, stretching their legs, so, like, gamify, leg stretching, um, <laughs> and uh, playing, like, fake you know, virtual instruments inside soundproof rooms, um, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, all these uh, hacks that kind of popped up over the year, of, uh, the first year of Connect being out, um, Microsoft shows them in this video and says, like, you know, good job, guys. Like, you're making us look good. Keep going for it. Uh, you know, what are you going to think of next? But it, so it's kind of like they're appropriating the appropriation. Um, but it's also really encouraging because it means that um, these larger corporations are starting to see that there's value in kind of distributed innovation. Um, and uh, the, there was <laughs> this is a very short story I want to share about Connect, which is that uh, the way that people got access to the Connect initially was um, with some code that uh, this kind of hacker researcher in Spain wrote. Um, because Adafruit here in Brooklyn had a bounty on hacking the Connect. They said, you know, if someone can figure out how to interface to this Connect, we'll give you $3,000. And this guy, the first day it comes out in Europe, 
plugs it into his Linux computer and starts writing a set of code, and then he gets the stream coming in into, into his laptop. Um, so the person who funded uh, a big portion of that $3,000 was actually working at Microsoft, and he didn't say anything about it until like a year after this was done. And then he finally came out and he said, okay, you know, everything's gone well, no one's gotten sued by anybody else, so I'm going to say now, like, I was funding that, and it's been really important to me to see, like, the Connect opened. And he wrote something really interesting. He said, you know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, as many smart people as we have at Microsoft uh, getting paid very well to do what they love, they're never going to be able to compete with millions of people who are doing what they love all day for no pay. Um, and I think that's like the testament of what the Kinect has, has proven so far. Um, I've been using it personally to do like some weird, uh, weird sculptures. Um, if you want to see these, I have them in the room next door, but they're like this big, they're 3D prints where I was working with another artist to ask people like, what do certain sounds sound like? We're getting people to become music, like asking people to be sound visualizers for us. <laughs> so we asked them, you know, we're going to give you a sound, what does this sound like? And then they would always inadvertently just use their hand gestures like I'm using now. So we recorded their hand gestures and then extruded them over time and uh, made these sculptures out of that. And there's some really interesting forms that have emerged. This is something we couldn't have really done without a connect because it demands this real-time um, interaction. Uh, so Connect has also been useful for doing things like face tracking, using some new technologies uh, for, um, well, this one's called Face OSC. I plugged it into uh, Open Frameworks and Processing using a small tool I wrote called Face Shift OSC. Um, if you go through this training process where you open up the Connect and then you tell it, you know, here's what a bunch of different gestures look like. You make faces at it for like two minutes, basically, and after you're done making faces, it can track your face really accurately. Um, uh, I've been talking with a friend recently about doing like um, face slackness uh, analysis. So some people have certain disabilities where the muscles are kind of like problematic in their face. Um, back to gamification, like the idea of maybe if you can not just uh, encourage people, but actually give them the feedback that they need about how accurately or how well they're doing something, maybe they can you know, improve on it just because they want to. Uh, and they just didn't, maybe you know, looking in a mirror isn't quite enough for them to know how, how well they're doing that. Um, you don't need to connect. You can work with just, uh, um, you can work just with a camera, actually. Uh, this is called Faso at Sea, using a library from uh, Australian researcher Jason Saragi. Uh, both these apps are like free to download, FaceShift and FaceOSC. Um, FaceShift is aimed at animators though, and they're still in beta, so I'm sure in like less than a year it's going to have like a big license fee, but I've been talking with them to try and keep them, keeping it open for like institutions to use for teaching purposes. Um, but FaceOSC is completely free. You can get data out of this application from your camera um, and use this for the similar kind of metrics. Two minutes? Okay, thanks. Um, Face recognition, totally different area. Instead of tracking faces and doing analysis, um, you can figure out who is who. Uh, some researchers, researchers at CMU last year found out that they can determine your social security number by taking a picture of you in public by cross-referencing against a publicly available data on the internet. Uh, you can use cameras for tracking people's pulses. That's an inter interesting kind of uh, detection that's come out in a few months ago. Tracking people's hands. Uh, this is with Connect again. Um, these are from some researchers in Greece at a computer vision research lab. Um, this is like the competition to the LEAP right now. Um, and someone just talked about LEAP earlier. Uh, the rest of the Pirate Pad, you should go through it. I listed like four innovators that I think everyone should know about who are working with new interfaces, doing things like uh, detecting what kind of object you're touching, making uh, surfaces that both deform physically and with light, um, making kits kind of like little bits, but like with things that you find around your around your household, um, uh, lasers that follow your hand and, you know, uh, whatever they're looking at with zero latency, um, <laughs> and robots that play rock, paper, scissors and always win because they're using high-speed cameras. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so check out the other list. There's a bunch of good stuff there. Hopefully I gave you guys some stuff that, that to imagine about. Thanks. <laughs> I'll be putting all those links up to our internal website. So what we're doing now is actually, as speakers, um, going to do a round of our concepting, which um, I'll actually, I realize I didn't do a good job of explaining to our other speakers. So I, I want each of you
you guys sit at a different group. Okay. And essentially, in about an hour, we have kids coming in. And all weekend, we've been doing these rapid design shreds, like make a mobile game that addresses this learning standard. And we're going to do a pitch. So this is our last one, and we're asking um, folks to think about either using the Connect or using a set of physical computing objects. Um, try and design a learning experience or tool that follows this learning standard. Understand, solve the equations as a process of reasoning. This is the exact standard that from the over. Um, understand solving equations as a process of reasoning and explain the reasoning. Solve equations and inequalities in one variable. Solve systems of equations.